this note on behalf of S. Jaipal Reddy Memorial Foundation, I uh, extend a big and warm invitation to our respected Chief Guest Sir, Sri Manishankar Ayer Garu, who was a former diplomat and a former uh, minister, a union minister, and he is an author of uh, several books. And uh, distinguished guest speakers, Sri Mohan Guruswami, senior economist, a prolific writer, a fantastic orator, and he is uh, chairman and founder, Center for Policy Alternatives, and former advisor to the Finance Department, Finance Ministry, Government of India. And Professor K. Purushottam Reddy, he is an eminent environmentalist and a political scientist. A very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the netizens who are joining this session from across the globe. And a sincere thanks to the press reporters and media personnel, to all the supporters and organizers of this thought-provoking lecture that encourages us to think global and act local. We are glad to see that there are some eminent personalities and dignitaries who have joined us at this venue amongst the audience uh, who have taken time out uh, from their busy schedules to attend this lecture. A warm welcome to uh, Professor uh, Shankar Chatterjee, NIRD, Mr. B.B. Subarao and Sri Papa Rao. Then we are also glad, we are also delighted to have Sarpanchas from few Gram Panchayats who have, who are attending this session and this particular lecture has, uh, uh, is of very much importance to them. So I heartily welcome them. Praja Swamyanlo Vikendri Karana Ane Amsampai Palu Vishyalu Padala Degara Telskoda Ani Givachila Palu Gramala Sarpanchulaku Ari Anucharulaku Rudai Purvakanga Abhinandistunam Bimalli E Karikarman Ki Swagatistunam So uh, this program on uh, this lecture session on uh, democracy and decentralization is being organized by S. Jaipal Reddy Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know Sri Jaipal Reddy was a charismatic and dynamic personality. He was widely regarded as a political stalwart for his democratic principles and secular outlook. In his political career spanning 50 years, he was elected five times to the Lok Sabha, served four terms as an MLA and nominated twice as member of Rajya Sabha. All through his life, he was an ardent proponent of representative form of government and dedicated his life for uploading, uh, upholding democratic values. This lecture is uh, organized in his fond memory and a tribute to his democratic values. He also authored the book, 10 Ideologies, The Great Asymmetry Between Agrarianism and Industrialism, which expounds on 10 major ideologies that helped in shaping the world. This, as you all know, any discussion or discourse on democracy attracts a great interest from one and all. Democracy is always work in progress. After all, it deals with our lives and how we organize our societies. A key ingredient of democracy is federal form of governance. Federalism or decentralization remains a cornerstone of democracy, particularly for nations having large land area and with vast ethnic, ideological and linguistic diversities. India ticks all the boxes. Federalism or decentralization, uh, there are certain crucial features that were enshrined in the Indian constitution by the founding fathers of the nation and there is more to accomplish owing to changing socio-political environment in the country. However, the society is as always divided in opinions with regards to power sharing mechanisms and arrangements between the center and regional governments. Some fear that too much federalism shall diffuse power to an extent that the nation may disintegrate. Others opine that federalism will strengthen at grassroots level and empower them to obtain government services with ease and without any adverse impact on their regional identities. What then is the best format for Indian polity? What are the limits of devolution of powers and what are its implications, benefits and long-term outlook? What are the current trends? And many more questions arise in this context. There is a lot to know about this topic from our eminent experts. Hence, I take the pleasure in inviting eminent speakers of the day onto the dais to enlighten us on the topic of the evening, democracy and decentralization. 
We are extremely fortunate to have Shri Madhishankar Iyer as chief guest of today's program to share his expert views on the topic of the day. It is my honor, sir, to invite you onto the dais. Ladies and gentlemen, a thundering applause to Mr. Madhishankar Iyer, former Union Minister for Government of India. We also have with us as guest speaker Mr. Mohan Guruswami, a prolific writer, head of Center for Policy Alternatives, distinguished fellow at the Observer Research Foundation and author of several books. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in inviting Sri Mohan Guruswami sir to the dais. It is an honor to have amongst us Professor K. Purushottam Reddy, an eminent environmentalist, political scientist and development activist. I cordially invite Professor Reddy to the dais. Dear all, please welcome Professor K. Purushottam Reddy with a big applause. We have three towering personalities here who grace the dais, waiting to share their knowledge and wisdom on the topic of the day, democracy and decentralization. It is our duty to express our gratitude to them for accepting our invitation to be our guest speakers. There is something pure and heartfelt and emotional and genuine about a bouquet of flowers. It always helps in expressing gratitude. I request Ms. Leela Lakshmareddy to offer a bouquet to Sri Manishankarai. Ms. Leela Lakshma Reddy shall offer a bouquet to Shri Mohan Guru Swami sir. And a bouquet to Professor K. Purushottam Reddy. On this note, it is time to continue with the program. Though they do not need special introduction, it's my pleasure to say a few words about our distinguished speakers before inviting them to the podium. Our first guest speaker, Professor K. Purushottam Reddy. Professor Reddy is a contemporary and a good friend of Sri late S. Jaipal Reddy. He is an eminent environmentalist, political scientist and developmental activist. He received MA, MPhil and PhD in political science from Usmania University. His PhD thesis is titled Environmental Policy and Education, an investigative analysis of eco-degradation of Patancharu in Andhra Pradesh. He held several posts as an academician, as professor, head of department and chairman of board of studies in the political science department. He was director for Center for Environmental Studies at Usmania University. He is a resource person for many universities and their academic staff colleges in the state. MCHRD, AP Judicial Academy, MIT School of Government, Pune, ESCI and Center for Cultural Resource Training as India's most eminent environmentalist. A true Gandhian in spirit with zero tolerance towards elements that disrupt social harmony and cause oppressions. He calls the society as his lab and dedicated his life for the cause of society and environment. So I cordially invite Professor K. Purushottam Reddy to the podium. Respected uh, Chief Guest, Sri Manishankar Ayurvaru, our distinguished guest, Sri Mohan Kuruswami Garu, Distinguished invitees, members of the family of Jaipal Radigaru. In fact, it is my privilege to be able to stand here because I, am, I have been associated with Jaipal Radigaru. He was my senior in the college. And together we were products of our time. And those times, believe me friends, the system was open where the mind was free and without fear. In the, in the words of Rabindranath Tagore, we had absolute freedom. We could invite any person, we could listen to their speeches, we, could, we would have a tremendous interaction. So there were no restrictions from the state side. And that was the time when we heard the who is who of India, right from Nehruji and, you know, Dr. Ramana Loya, Vajpayee, you know, you, you name it and I can tell. Even Supreme Court judges, Justice Gajendra Gadkar. So Jaipal Reddy being a product, a witness to those, those times, he was elected many times in the college. He became the OUSU president. Entire Osmania University had one student's union. And uh, elected members from all the colleges would vote. So that was the time 
when there was freedom, when, you know, we, we were all products of, I am not saying that we participated in the freedom struggle, but definitely we were the first beneficiaries of the excellent leadership which emerged after independence. I do not wish to take much time, <coughs> but it's very important that I recall my teacher, Professor Shivaya Garu, because the topic is Panchayat Raj, and Professor Shivaya, who was in Osmani University, subsequently joined, subsequently joined NIRD. He was heading the political science division of NIRD. It so happened that Rajiv Gandhi visited as Prime Minister, NIRD, <coughs> and in his speech, you know, something which became very famous, he talked about the journey of a rupee. And a Delhi ninchi oka rupai bail de rindi. Kani gram panchayat koya sariki, then value padian pai, and the padian pai salaku, and a thargo to win. So Madhyana yogur quotation rain kata, that's a uh, very, that's a separate story. But I wish to point out that there is a book in political science written by Harold Lasswell. <coughs> And the name of the book is Politics is Who Gets What, When and How. The remaining I leave it for your imagination. So when the Prime Minister visited NIRD, he expressed his anguish. Then NIRD Director General uh, suggested <laughs> Professor Shivaya's name and the Prime Minister and my teacher, they had a long conversation. And the task of drafting the Panchayat Raj bill, uh, which subsequently became 73rd and 74th, you know, that was entrusted to Professor Shivaya Garu. And uh, it is because of his immense contribution. Believe me, he was a great intellectual without even one degree of selfishness. He sacrificed his life for the growth of the knowledge. So because of that attitude, this wonderful legislation came into being. But during Rajiv Gandhi's time, <coughs> when it was introduced, it was known as the 64th and 65th am Amendment. But uh, unfortunately, then the Rajiv Gandhi did not have the majority in the Rajya Sabha, and therefore it could not be adopted. Subsequently, uh, two other Prime Ministers, but during P.V. Narasimharao's time, he was able to garner the requisite majority and uh, that particular bill was adopted under the, it's known as the 73rd and 74th Amendment. I'm not going into the small little details, but I wish to point out what is the status. Today, definitely, the local governments enjoy what we call constitutional protection. <coughs> to that extent, it is fine. But unfortunately, certain things have gone wrong in this country. The election commission, which is supposed to be autonomous, the state election commission, the state finance commission, in many a state, they tow the policy of the state government, which is unfortunate. As a result, what is happening? The local panchayats, the panch particularly you, you take it in even urban government because myself and Subaraji <coughs> during the COVID time, sir, we organized a hundred uh, webinars on the very many issues faced by Hyderabad and others similar urban areas in the country. I just wish to point out certain things which need to be rectified because we are very fortunate to have our distinguished chief guest, who is an authority on this subject. And we have in this hall, Professor Shankar Chatterjee, uh, who is still uh, recently retired from NIRD, but he is an authority unto himself. So the first point is, in spite of the constitutional status, local governments, that is panchayats and, and municipalities, they lack effective devolution of powers. 
and functions from the state government. This is a general complaint throughout the country. It's not specific to our state. Second point is at the district level and also at the, at the uh, capital, state capital level when it comes to the city, we have certain parallel institutions. For example, the district uh, health society, district rural development authority, DRDA, and district water and sanitation, etc. So they decide everything. In fact, the purpose of panchayats was to facilitate, you know, in this country, at the grassroots level, a system of governance where direct democracy can manifest. Believe me, friends, I have visited many Gram Panchayas and today we have quite a few Sarpanches. I had the opportunity to participate in the Grama Sabhas and believe me, nobody takes cognizance of what they decide. It is only over Naam Ke Vaste. I'll, I'll go into the details subsequently. Then the subjects mentioned, that is that the subjects which have been transferred to Panchayats, and also municipalities or municipal corporations, they are just illustrative. It's not a comprehensive list. But unfortunately what, what is happening is that the, these local governments are told that it is comprehensive. And there is no proper training. As a result, the local governments are not asserting Actually, if only they are told, the, particularly the concept of the doctrine of implied powers, to implement one power, you can, you can go on uh, increasing the powers connected with it. Doctrine of implied powers, which is the, the doctrine which saved America. Anyway, we don't have Chief Justice Marshall type in this country and uh, we are paying a very heavy price. And even there is no proper leadership that is being trained at the panchayat level. As a result, they are feeling depressed. Telula yapal nante, valleman kunte nante, me me inja samsar. Nante avoka vidhama ena depression, helplessness, and that is destroying the entire system. I come to the next one. We have at the national level NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority. But at the state level, on paper also, we have SDMA. And again, whenever I say state, it is not this state. I am talking about the states in the country. State Disaster Management Authority, it should be allowed to, you know, to work very effectively. For that, it should be given finances personnel and other facilities and it should it should uh, be working with the precautionary principle because disasters need to be prevented there, there is very little that we can do once it manifests except for certain kinds of disasters then we come to small little things which can be done tomorrow for example where is the need to give this local area development funds to MLAs and MPs Local area development funds, they can be directly transferred to the local governments. Madhyana Villa Pedari Kamendi. And are we not trusting the wisdom of the people living, uh, in the local government? The Krama Sabha is ultimate. So that is that can be done anytime. Sir, as all of you, all of us know, all the powers in this country are divided into at the national level, central list, state list and concurrent list. But then the power of local government, the power to manage local government is vested with the state government. Now why can't we trust the local governments? Why Madhyana state government Pedarika Menduku, Sarpanchala Namalema, can't we trust the mayors? After all, just as we trust the central government, state government, we the people also trust, it is our own will. Please remember, it is we the people. When we vote for a national election, by virtue of our vote, somebody becomes, some party becomes a ruling and someone becomes a prime minister. 
same thing happens at the state level anyway uh, i request everyone to ponder on this and lastly i have seen so many gram panchayats particularly when their meetings are going on suddenly we notice one mla comes the constituency mla and believe me there is so much of ruckus everybody leaves everything and their focus is on attending the mla this is very bad rule of law should be there i don't understand the logic of mla and mp attending local governments this has to be rectified or let there be a, a big discussion so one last point as i mentioned about the central list state list and concurrent originally india's uh, state list had 66 powers during the emergency thanks to mrs indira gandhi because when when she imposed the emergency definitely we all opposed it but when madam gandhi did certain good things definitely one should have the courage to appreciate she has taken out from the state list five powers and added to the concurrent list these are education forests protection of wild animals <coughs> administration of justice weights and measures i i propose in this uh, distinguished gathering that we should consider shifting the the power that is there in number 5 entry 5 that is local government that should be you consider i am not saying uh, i am nobody to say that it should happen but definitely that can be considered as a big remedy or you know it it can be described as a corrective mechanism and i i'm i'm looking forward to our chief guest who is an authority on this you know he has done tremendous work thank you sir for coming to hyderabad because you know we who have been living here for us delhi to bahut dur hai but thanks to modern ways of communication and you being so accessible almost the entire group that came to your house to invite us they are here in the hall sir and uh, thanks for coming we look we look forward for your guidance and because this is needed for the in the interest of india in the interest of democracy and we need to restore the confidence of the people because on paper they have powers but in reality no in in telangana like in other states ordinary collector how dare he uh, is suspend a people selected gram panchayat and for on flimsy grounds can the chief secretary suspend just like that the, the state government public opinion is public opinion they can't it can't be taken for granted so i thank uh, the foundation the political foundation for uh, inviting me and giving me this opportunity thank you very much thank you very much dr reddy uh we the people being the essence of democracy so very well explained and you have also uh enlightened us with all the uh, effort and antecedents of uh, the panchayat raj uh, uh, and the local governments amendments that have happened in constitution of india so thank you very much our next speaker of the day is uh, mr mohan guruswami sir mr mohan guruswami is a well known astute analytical expertise on multiple subject and uh, he is known for his wit and oratory skills i watched some of his uh, talks on tedx and uh, he mixes a uh, fair amount of humor with lot of information he has a vibrant career path that included teaching senior management journalism and he has been an advisor to the finance ministry 
government of india which has a rank of uh, secretary to the government of india he was actually a product of nizam college hyderabad where he did his graduation and went on to acquire post graduation in public policy international affairs and management an alumnus of jf kennedy school harvard university graduate school of business stanford university he is a frequent commentator on national and international media on matters of current interest his papers on redefining poverty income inequality backwardness of bihar economic development in west bengal fdi in retail have been published in well regarded journals mr guruswami has been an avid traveler and author of several books his recent books are the looming crisis in india's agriculture issues in development india's world essays in foreign policy and security issues india china relations the border issue and beyond the latest being chasing the dragon will india catch up with china so on this note i cordially welcome sri guru swami sir to deliver his speech the basic lesson in public administration is the nature of the regime determines the outcome you might talk of democracy you might talk of so many things but how that regime is what it actually is determines the outcome now <clears throat> i wrote my last book on comparison of china and india and in 1950 china's public administration expenditures the cost of government was almost 73% at the center and 27% at the provinces and and the lower level highly centralized state communist party is very high so that's why they used to have that kind of a regime if you have a decentralized government then everybody will speak if you have a centralized regime only one person will speak and india at that time in 1950 was 42% central government no sorry 47% central government 42% state government and 11% to local government so you had this system i thought to myself that you have 47 center 42 state and 11 at local level so you got nine fellows who will tell you what to do and one person who will do something for you in government and that's a simple analysis of that then i studied the same situation in 1950 by then the chinese has shifted from 70 center they became 27 center and everything had gone down and they took all the big public sector companies all that and gave it to the provinces and said do what you want with it you want to sell it sell it but we are not going to give any money we will only look after defense and telecommunications and these things but in india what happened after all this talk of decentralization panchayati raj sk day block development all that 47 became 42 and 42 became 47 11 remained as it is so at the bottom level there is nobody so i wrote a paper few years ago after a big trip across the country because i love traveling because i get out of the city uh so i noticed that there's no government outside the highway you leave the highway go 5 km this side there's no no government because all the drains are filled with plastic all the ponds are filled with plastic all the sewage is in the village because there is nobody responsible we had a traditional system where people by caste did their work but we said no no this is not the way we going to do it we will have a new system of government and nothing is happening nothing works in a there is no government at best the representative of government is a school teacher he is the highest ranking fellow next is probably the forest guard or the clerk in the tehsil office Well, if you go to a village, particularly in Central India, North India, the only pakka houses belong to the government employees. So the tehsil clerk or the forest guard or the police constable, whoever, they are pakka houses. Everybody else lives in thatched houses or in tiled houses. So that tells you who has getting the money in the village. So the result is that today, if you want a drain to be cleaned, you don't know where to go. you don't know who to ask because the fellow who should do it traditionally because of his birth he is not doing it anymore he says i am equal to you why don't you do it if dora says 
కొంచెం సాత్ చేయి అంటే దొరకట్టు నువ్వు సాత్ చేయి బాబు ఇన్ని సంవత్సరాలు మేము చేసిన ఇక నువ్వు పని చేయి సో దట్ ఈస్ ది సిస్టమ్ వి కమ్ టు కంప్లీట్ బ్రేక్ డౌన్ అండ్ కాస్ట్ ఆఫ్ గవర్నమెంట్ ఇస్ గోన్ ఆఫ్ మీ టర్న్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ది రీజన్స్ వై ఇస్ దట్ వీ ఆర్ షార్ట్ ఆఫ్ యు నో అబౌట్ త్రీ హండ్రెడ్ పోలీస్మెన్ టు ఎవ్రీ థౌజండ్ శాంక్షన్ is down the line nurses teachers because salary is very high now a police constable gets 30000 rupees or 40000 rupees um, a clerk gets that much school teacher gets that much so the government doesn't have money to appoint more people so they do contract labor so contract labor for all gets 6000 rupees to teach in a school and the permanent employee will get 30000 rupees and the schools are not employed primary health centers don't have doctors because government has no money but in spite of that the total cost of government how much of money we pay for government is 11.4% of gdp and if you add pensions and all those benefits it becomes 12.5% of gdp then we have you know all our other commitments so biggest expenditure in government is salaries of government public administration uh but are you getting any return for it because if you go to a village it is the social structures appended the government employee is the tallest fellow you know and the so he's not going to listen to anybody so every time i go to a school or in a village and i ask where is the teacher they say dora var rale dor and i went to a panchayat i spent a few days in a panchayat in madhya pradesh in betul and the sarpanch the lady elected as the gram pradhan she would come she came to the morning office opened the office then put the stove made some tea then the secretary of the panchayat the fellow lives in the district headquarters 40 kilometers away he comes and he says i chai banaye kya So that fellow is supposed to keep notes or records and all, but he is outranking her because he's got a motorbike, he's English speaking, he's a government employee. So the eye is making tea. I was sitting and watching. Then he said, oh, ledger lao, kitna anaj hai, how much of rice is there, how much of wheat is there. So then she said, barabar isab kare, then he went off. So government has effectively not transferred to people. Um, so I said that something has to be done. one of the things the state government has done in its own way in this state is to have smaller districts smaller collectorates and then smaller mandals etc etc so you taking government down to people but yet you are still stuck with the problem of not having people to work for you even in a city if your tap goes who will you go to or your electric bulb outside the street is not working by the time you call the fellow is taking 4 5 days so there's nobody doing any work and this cost of government is very high so uh, nine people doing nothing so when rajiv gandhi said 85% doesn't go down this is what he meant not corruption there are too many fellows in between doing nothing corruption actually is not so big as we make out corruption in india is all small corruption you know 5 rupees 10 rupees nothing uh, you know cup of tea but if you want to see corruption you must go to china everybody is corrupt all the politburo members have properties in america all of them most of them are billionaires indian corruption you know short of till rafale and things started happening is very small so i don't think we should be we are hung up on corruption but we should be looking at reforming government reform is decentralization empowering people i don't know why a school in a village should be run by the director of education sitting in hyderabad or the director of medical ex, uh, services is running a clinic somewhere else in in adilabad the people of adilabad we should have in the old days we used to have district medical boards district education they've all gone all become nice and central so when i was in government one day i was asked by the uh, then home minister to write a paper on decentralization because every government which comes says decentralize karna hai they understand the problem so i made a presentation and all that and all the chief ministers invited so 
चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ गुजरात केशु भाई पटेल ही हर्ट केयरफुल एंड ही सेड ये सब करेंगे तो हमारे पास कौन आएगा तो दैट इज द बेसिक क्वेश्चन व्हिच मनी एंड हिज फ्रेंड्स हैव टू एड्रेस कि द मिनिट गवर्नमेंट इज डिसेंट्रलाइज्ड तुम्हारा दुकान बंद सो सो दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम सो द ओनली वे यू कैन सॉर्ट इट आउट आई थिंक इज ब्रिंग देम ऑल डाउन and we need to get restructure government and manmohan singh said i will reform government how can you reform government how can you destroy the system which put you there so i think we've gone far so either the system has to break down or the country has to break down or the entire system. so something has to be done that something will happen you can't continue like this forever soon or later something will happen and people of india have got a lot of life lot of strength and once they are up they are up thank you very much sir that's a lucid account of uh, ground realities thank you very much and what happens in suburban areas and villages and what needs to be done so uh, i move on to our uh, next uh, guest who is the eminent um, uh, personality shri marishankar ayer sir he is an iconic figure in political circles a former diplomat who after a distinguished career in foreign service became a senior leader in the indian national congress he was four times member of parliament thrice to lok sabha from mailadutarai constituency this is in tamil nadu and was nominated once for the rajya sabha he joined the indian foreign service and served as the joint secretary to government of india in ministry of uh, and later he served he headed ministry of external affairs and later at prime minister's office he attended doon school where he took the role of student editor to the doon school weekly this is where he met late prime minister sri rajiv gandhi and they remained very close associates later he did his graduation in economics from delhi university followed up by bachelor of arts in economics from cambridge university he joined the cabinet of dr manmohan singh led upa government where he was the head of panchayat raj shri manishankar ayer also held the portfolios for ministries of petroleum and natural gas youth affairs and sports and development of northeastern regions in 2006 he was honored as the year's outstanding parliamentarian by the president of india During his long tenure of public service Mr Iyer developed a reputation for being an avid orator a prolific newspaper and journal columnist and an authority on south asian politics He has written several books few of them dedicated to our late prime minister Mr Rajiv Gandhi He has always been an advocate of grassroots democracy and pressed for representative form of government as he always carried a clear understanding about the process of devolution of power so i cordially invite respected chief guest sir sri manishankar ayer to deliver his lecture welcome sir the respected members of the family of my friend s jaypal reddy garu my fellow speakers shri mohan guruswami garu and professor purushottam reddy garu i would particularly like to note the presence of several uh, sarpanches from our panchayats who are among us and distinguished ladies and gentlemen um i f- i feel uncomfortable speaking to you in english so with everybody's permission i'll mix some sentences in english with some sentences in hindi so that i hope i can get through to the most important segment of this of this audience which i think are the sarpanches who have taken the trouble to come from their respective villages here to this meeting mahatma gandhi ne chaha tha कि पंचायत राज हमारे जमहूरियत का बुनियाद बने और डॉक्टर अंबेडकर ने कहा कि ये कैसे हो सकता है हमारे गांव में तो रद्दड़ है कुछ भी नहीं है लोग एक दूसरे को पीड़ित करते हैं जो ऊंचे वर्ग के हैं जो ऊंचे जात के हैं वो अपनी तानाशाही चलाते हैं और इसलिए हमने 
कुछ कोशिश किया कि गांव में लोगों को सुपुर्द को सुपुर्दगी करके उनको सशक्त करें तो कैसे जिया जा सकता है इन शॉर्ट डॉक्टर अंबेडकर रिजेक्टेड द आइडिया दैट महात्मा गांधी हैड पुट फॉरवर्ड ऑफ मेकिंग पंचायती राज द बेसिस ऑफ आवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन द बेसिस ऑफ आवर डेमोक्रेसी ऑन द ग्राउंड दैट द विलेजेस ऑफ इंडिया सेस्पेक्ट्स that they are socially oppressive that the higher caste will capture all power and they will use it in order to further oppress the dalits and that is why the constitution of india has only a small one line provision for panchayats in the directive principles of state policy which means it's not justiciable and it is there to be found in the constitution jabki mahatma gandhi ko bataya gaya ki masoda mein panchayat raj ka koi zikr hi nahi hai to unko hairiyat hui unhone kaha ki ye kaise ho sakta hai lekin unka dehant ek mahine ke andar ho gaya aur uske baad jabki dr rajendra prasad ne kaha ki aap panchayat raj ko le aaiye उनको बताया गया कि बहुत देर हो गया है और जबकि इस पर चर्चा होती है तो सही जगह पर कुछ न कुछ पंचायती राज के बारे में लिखा जाएगा तो यही है बुनियादी कारण कि हमारे संविधान में जो कुछ भी करने का है केंद्र में और जो कुछ भी करने का है राज्य में उसके लिए पूरा प्रावधान है लेकिन जो करना चाहिए नीचे जमीन पर माटी के स्तर पर वो नहीं होता है अनफॉर्चुनेटली बिकॉज द प्रोविजन फॉर पंचायती राज इज लिमिटेड टू अ सिंगल सेंटेंस इन दी इन दी डिरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी विच इज नॉट जस्टिसबल वी हैव अ सिचुएशन दैट वाइल the constitution has ensured that the center will have adequate powers and the state will have adequate powers there was nothing provided for at the lowest level this was left to the state governments to do and the most remarkable thing is the state governments did not do it if they had panchayats they would dissolve them if they didn't have panchayats they wouldn't create them sometimes panchayats would go on for 15 years at other times they'd be finished in 15 days to isko durust karne ke liye aur waqai tarakki ko nichle star tak le jane ke liye to ensure that development took place at the grassroots and that it was not confined to the center and state levels Jawaharlal Nehru after experimenting with the community development program which he found unsatisfactory because it was bureaucratic rather than democratic he came up with a suggestion a model panchayat raj act pandit ji ne socha ki isko durust karne ke liye जबकि उनको पता लगा कि कम्युनिटी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम जिसके जरिए ब्लॉक डेवलपमेंट ऑफिसर बनाए गए थे देश भर में और जिनसे जिनके शिकार आप सब लोग हो उस ब्लॉक डेवलपमेंट ऑफिसर को सारा को सशक्त करके जनता के हाथ में कुछ नहीं रहा तो इसलिए पंडित जी ने एक कमेटी बनवाया बलवंत राय मेहता के जरिए और उसके से उन सिफारिशों के आधार पर उन्होंने एक मॉडल एक्ट तैयार किए क्यों एक मॉडल एक्ट क्योंकि पंचायतों को निर्माण करना वो राज्यों का की जिम्मेवारी थी तो उन्होंने कहा कि हम संविधान को नहीं बदलेंगे हम इतना ही करेंगे कि हम उनको बताएंगे सब राज्यों को कि कैसा पंचायत राज को गठित किया जाए और क्योंकि उस जमाने में मैं उन्नीस सौ और उन्नीस की बात कर रहा हूँ और तकरीबन सारे राज्य के सरकार कांग्रेस के थे 
और पंडित जी कांग्रेस सरकार चले चलाते रहे दिल्ली में इसलिए हर जगह पंचायती राज का स्थापन हुआ सो पंडित जी डिसाइडेड दैट ही वुड क्रिएट अ मॉडल एक्ट व्हाई अ मॉडल एक्ट बिकॉज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से दैट पंचायत आर द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सो सिंस ही वॉज अ स्ट्रिक्ट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनलिस्ट he could only prepare a model act and present it to the state governments but in 1957 and 1962 virtually all state governments were with the congress and the central government was with the congress and the whole system was run by a giant whose word was the law and therefore panchayati raj got created but as a private enterprise of the prime minister there was no conviction that this should be done the result was ki jab ki unka dehant hua 27 mai 1964 ko to wahi ke wahi panchayati raj ka bhi dehant hua dheeme dheeme takriban har rajya mein jahan ki panchayat raj chalta tha usko chhod diya ya usko bigad diya bas bombay प्रोविंस एक था जहाँ की आज के दिन महाराष्ट्र और गुजरात है जहाँ की ये चलते रहा लेकिन अपने ही तरीके से बाकी समस्त भारतवर्ष में कोई पाँच दस साल के अंदर आप देखते तो पंचायती राज का न नाम न निशान रहा सो विद इन अ फ्यू इयर्स ऑफ जवाहरलाल नाथ नेहरू पासिंग अवे दे वॉज almost no panchayati raj to be found anywhere in the country except in gandhi ji's province of gujarat and in maharashtra where it had been fairly firmly fixed so that is the situation that prevailed when rajiv gandhi came to power aur jab rajiv ji pradhan mantri bane to meri khush kismati rahi कि मुझको उनके साथ देश का दौरा करना पड़ा इट वॉज माई गुड फॉर्च्यून दैट वेन राजीव गांधी बिकेम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया इट वॉज वन ऑफ माई ड्यूटीज टू ऑर्गेनाइज एंड अकम्पनी हिम ऑन हिज रूरल टूअर्स थ्रू आउट द कंट्री एंड वॉट राजीव सॉ इज वॉट मोहन गुरु स्वामी टोल्ड यू अबाउट जो राजीव ने देखा ग्रामीण इलाकों में बस वो ही था जो कि मोहन गुरु स्वामी अब दौरे कर कर देख कर आ रहे हैं कि जो सरकारी नौकर हैं वो ही उन्हीं के दबाव में सब चल रहा है और कि चुने हुए प्रतिनिधिगण जो हैं या तो वो हैं ही नहीं या हैं भी तो उनको अपना सर झुकाना पड़ रहा है और उनके घुटने टेकने पड़ते हैं जो सरकारी अफसर हैं उनके सामने और कि जो अभी इन्होंने बताया कि टीचर जो है या कोई डॉक्टर हो वो ही बनते हैं जिनके पास पक्का घर हो और बाकी सब अपने झुग्गी झोंपड़ी में रहते हैं सो वॉट हैज़ बीन डिस्क्राइब बाय मोहन गुरुस्वामी वॉज एग्जैक्टली वॉट राजीव गांधी फाउंड in his extensive tours through rural parts of almost every state of india in fact for some strange reason the one state he did not go to was sikkim i don't know why he didn't go there but if you leave us out sikkim whether it was the mountains of arunachal pradesh or the delta areas of andhra pradesh or it was the deccan plateau or it was the coastal areas of tamil nadu or it was the deserts of rajasthan or it was the hills of himachal pradesh he went to every part of india he did not confine himself to the capitals he went out among the people and he spent endless hours just trying to ascertain from the people themselves what it is 
that they were lacking and what could be the means of handing it over to them. So, when they were in their own way, and when they were in their own way, they were in their own way. So, they were in their own way. So, they were in their own way. But, they were in their own way. जो अरुणाचल प्रदेश के महान पहाड़ हैं वहाँ हो या आंध्र प्रदेश के जो कोस्टल एरियाज़ हैं आपके डेल्टा एरियाज़ गोदावरी डेल्टा हो या तमिलनाडु के राज्य के जो ग्रामीण स्थान हो या रेगिस्तान की बात हो या पहाड़ों की बात हो कोई ऐसा ऐसा नुक्कड़ नहीं छोड़ा गया भारतवर्ष में जहाँ की भारत के प्रधानमंत्री ने खुद नहीं पहुँचा और अपने आँखों से गवाही की वही चीज़ जिसका जिक्र हमारे मित्र मोहन गुरु स्वामी जी ने अभी आपके सामने पेश किया लेकिन क्योंकि वो प्रधानमंत्री थे और मोहन गुरु स्वामी बहुत अफसोस की बात है प्रधानमंत्री नहीं है इसलिए राजीव कुछ कर सकते थे उसके बारे में so we were very fortunate that because Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister, he did not limit his activity to observing. He could also do something about it. And it was in fact here in Hyderabad, and mention has been made of that at the NIRD, that it became absolutely clear to him as to what needed to be done. Ittafakan, isi Hyderabad mein, NIRD mein, jahaan ki wo paunche the, aur mein bhi unke saath tha, unko achanak, samaj mein a gaya ki kya karna chahiye, is sthiti ko durust karne ke liye. Aur wo tha, the occasion was, the second meeting of the district magistrates of India. Pradhan Mantri Rajiv Gandhi ne tay kiya ki bajai mere samajne ka ki kya galat hai aur kaise usko sahi kar sakte hai mein desh ke samast district magistrates jinka naam alag alag hai alag alag rajyo mein kahi dipti commissioner kehte hai कहीं कलेक्टर कहते हैं कहीं डिप्टी कमिश्नर कहते हैं लेकिन बिना एक को छोड़े इस देश के तकरीबन 600 इन अफसरान से वो मिले और जबकि वो मिलते थे तो घंटों उनके बीच में बिताते थे ही वुड स्पेंड आवर्स लिसनिंग टू व्हाट दीज 600 डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट्स हैड टू से and after the first meeting, in, uh, which was in Bhopal, in December 1987, he said to me, Mani, have you noticed how all the bright district magistrates want the opinion of the people to run their administration, and all the idiots don't want it and want to be on their own? Rajiv ne would say, पहले मीटिंग के बाद जो कि दिसंबर सन 1987 में हुआ था 87 में हुआ था भोपाल में उन्होंने मुझे एक तरफ ले जाकर कहा कि आपने देखा है क्या कि जितने भी बुद्धिशाली डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट्स हैं वो सब कहते हैं कि जनता के प्रतिनिधियों से राय मशवरा करके हमने शासन को चलाया तो बेहतर होगा और जितने भी बुद्धू हैं वो सब कहते हैं कि हम पर छोड़ दीजिए हम अकेले कर सकते हैं ये जो अनपढ़ हैं इनसे हमारा क्या लेना देना लेकिन जहाँ की ये सवाल उठा था उनके मन में भोपाल में कोई तीन चार महीने बाद फरवरी 88 में जब हम हैदराबाद पहुँचे और दूसरे डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट से हमारी यहाँ मीटिंग हुई तब उनके उनका मन स्पष्ट हो गया था कि हम सरकार को तब ही सला सकते हैं माटी के स्तर पर जबकि जनता के प्रतिनिधि 
हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं प्रशासन के साथ जुड़े हैं और दोनों को एक साथ मिलकर इस बैल गाड़ी को आगे ले जाना है कि न तो यहां के जो चुने हुए प्रतिनिधिगण हैं वो अकेले अपने आप और बिना कोई सहारा कुछ सही काम कर सकते हैं और नहीं कि कोई आईएएस का अफसर वहां डिस्ट्रिक्ट में पहुंचे और कहे कि मैं जानता हूं सब कुछ क्योंकि मैं पढ़ा लिखा हूं मैं सेंट स्टीवंस का हूं मैं कैम्ब्रिज का हूं और इसलिए मुझे क्या सीखने की जरूरत है इन अनपढ़ गदगद लोगों से तो दोनों की जरूरत है और दोनों को बैलगाड़ी में लगाएं तो तभी गाड़ी आगे बढ़ेगी इट इज ओनली इफ द ब्यूरोक्रेसी एट द ग्रास रूट्स कैन बी योक्ड टू द सेम कार्ट दैट द पीपल्स रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स आर अटेम्पटिंग टू पुल दैट बिटवीन द टू ऑफ देम दे विल बी एबल टू अचीव व्हाट नीड्स टू बी अचीव्ड एंड देन ओवर द नेक्स्ट थ्री मीटिंग्स तीन और ऐसे मीटिंग्स हुए एक मणिपुर में इम्फाल में एक जयपुर में और एक कोयम्बतूर में तो मतलब पूरा देश पूरे देश में वो घूमे अपने डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट से मिले कभी कभी ऐसा हो जाता था कि हम मीटिंग में रात के तीन बजे पहुंचते थे रात के तीन बजे पहुंचते थे पूरा दिन यात्रा करने के पश्चात और उनको बस अपना मुंह धोने का था और कुछ नहीं पहुंच जाते थे और ऐसा काम बातचीत करते थे लोगों से जैसा कि सुबह का नौ बजे हो जो बेचारे सोते सोते जवाब देते थे उनको और तीन बजे से लेकर छः बजे तक हमारी बहस होती थी और फिर आठ बजे को जनाब तैयार हैं कहने के लिए कि आज की यात्रा अब शुरू करें अब मुझे पता नहीं कहाँ से उनको इतना दम मिला और ये तो मैं ज़रूर नहीं बता सकता हूँ कि मुझसे मुझको कहाँ से दम मिला उनके पीछे जाने का लेकिन वो थे हमारे बॉस तो इसलिए उनके कहने पर हम भी चलते थे यानी हाँ दीज मीटिंग्स वो गॉन एट ऑल आवर्स ऑफ द डे and i particularly remember a meeting in coimbatore after he had traveled through the whole of northern tamil nadu from the early morning till that till and done a rally in the middle of the night that after 12 o'clock he arrived at 3 a.m. to meet these district magistrates and he stayed with them till 6 in the morning and then at 8 o'clock he was ready to start his day again लेकिन इसका नतीजा ये था कि उन्होंने एक किस्म का मंथन करवाया कि जो अच्छा पंचायती राज है उसका अनुभव उन्होंने मिलाया गलत पंचायत राज के साथ उनके मन में कोई ऐसी इच्छा नहीं थी कि कांग्रेस के राज्यों को बहुत अच्छा दिखाए और कि विपक्ष के राज्यों को बहुत बुरा दिखा है खास तौर पर यहाँ आंध्र प्रदेश में जो एन साहब ने शुरू किया था उसको जाकर जांच करने के लिए वो खुद निकले और अपनी गाड़ी चलाते हुए उस जमाने का जो आंध्र प्रदेश था समस्त आंध्र प्रदेश वहाँ पूरे घूमे और जगह जगह पर रोककर लोगों से पूछते थे वहाँ के सरपंचों से पूछते थे और एक डिस्ट्रिक्ट डेवलपमेंट प्लान करते थे एनटीआर साहब उसको भी समझकर बंगाल में जहाँ की कम्युनिस्ट सरकार थी वहाँ बहुत अच्छा पंचायत राज चल रहा था तो वहाँ से भी समझकर लेकर उस सब का एक मंथन बनाकर और उसके बाद जो अमृत निकला वो ही अंत में जाकर पंचायत राज के संशोधन बने संविधान में सो वॉट राजीव यूज टू डू इज टू नॉट कंसिडर हु वॉज इन पावर इन विच स्टेट हेयर इन आंध्र प्रदेश 
he traveled around the place with NTR. And NTR had attempted his own form of Panchayati Raj. So he picked something from that. He went all over Bengal. And whatever was available in that communist run state, he accepted that. He went to Karnataka and was very impressed with what Ramakrishna Hegde, who was deadly anti-Congress, what was he doing? And he had a man, a minister called Abdul uh, Nazir. And he picked up everything he could from Abdul Nazir. And he threw all these elements into having the kind of manthan which produced, with the efforts of Mohini, the Amrit in our traditions. And what he produced was the Amrit of Panchayati Raj. And that was to say that Panchayat Raj will remain a state subject. Here, a suggestion was given that we have to remove the state list from concurrent list so that we have to Panchayat Raj. लेकिन राजीव ने कहा नहीं क्योंकि वो नहीं चाहते थे कि केंद्र और राज्य के बीच में झगड़ा शुरू करवाए वो तो चाह रहे थे कि हमें स्थाई इकाइयों को सशक्त करना है और वो एकमात्र हमारे लक्ष्य रहना चाहिए और एकमात्र लक्ष्य रहने से ही कुछ करवा पाएंगे सो ही रूल्ड आउट any question of changing the constitution. And don't forget that was the years of the Sarkaria Commission. And they had come out in 1987 with their report on center state relations. And the Bombay judgment was about to come. So he didn't want to take the focus away from the empowerment of the panchayats and shift it into the controversy over the center and the states. At that time, Jaipal Reddy was in the opposition. Us time, Jaipal ji vipaksh ke neta the, aur unhone badi mukhalifat ki. Ye jo panchayat raj ko lane ka prayas ho raha tha, aur unka bas yehi kehna tha, khas taur par ki ye to ek raj ka vishay hai. Aap kendra mein baith kar kya kar rahe ho? PM to DM without CM. ये था उनका उनका आलोचना. अब इसमें कोई खास सच नहीं थी क्योंकि CM को बुलाते थे कहते थे कि आप भी आइए लेकिन अक्सर विपक्ष के CM खास तौर पर पहुंचते ही नहीं थे और वो बस लगे हुए थे बोफर्स की बात करने में शाबानों की बात करने में और क्योंकि उनको ये आंदोलन चलाना था उनके खिलाफ तो इस रचनात्मक काम में ऑपोजिशन के जो मुख्यमंत्री थे और ऑपोजिशन के जो मेंबर्स थे राज्यसभा में तो बहुत थे लोकसभा में कम थे लेकिन उनकी मुखालिफत रही ये हकीकत है इसलिए उन्होंने कहा कि हम ऐसा करेंगे कि पहले हम स्थापित करेंगे कि संविधान के जरिए पंचायत राज होना ही चाहिए कि पंचायतों के बिना आप रह नहीं सकते हो तो कि ये एक मर्जी नहीं रही राज्यों का ये उनका दायित्व बना और आज तक वो सबसे बड़ी उपलब्धि वही है कि आप जहां भी जाओ हमारे देश में आपको पंचायत राज की इकाइयां मिलते ही हैं सरपंच मिलते ही हैं और जो उन्होंने आरक्षण का इंतजाम किया था वो मुकम्मल तौर पर इस देश में चल रहा है किस हद तक कुछ आंकड़े में आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूं द ग्रेट थिंग अबाउट व्हाट राजीव डिड वाज टू मेक इट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली ऑब्लिगेटरी 
to implement the directive principle of state policy. That you must have panchayats. You can't get away from it. I've often used the expression, which I can't translate into Hindi, that he made panchayati raj ineluctable, irreversible, and irremovable. You just had to have panchayati raj. And till today, that has been the big success of panchayati raj. There's nowhere you can go in the country without finding panchayats and the officials concerned. As also, most importantly, the reservation system that he thought up to answer Dr. Ambedkar's point. Kya kya? Chamatkar zara samaj lijiye. Unho ne kaha ki haan, raj ya desh ke star par 22 pratishat joh humari janta hai, wo schedule cast से जुड़ी हुई है तो बजाय यह कहने का कि हर पंचायत में 22 प्रतिशत आरक्षण रहेगा उन्होंने कहा नहीं आप गांव में जाकर देखिए जहां की या उन गांवों में जाकर देखिए जहां की पंचायत स्थापित होने वाला है और वहां जो भी शेड्यूल कास्ट का हिस्सा हो तद अनुसार आरक्षण होगा तो यदि गांव के स्तर पर 40 प्रतिशत एससी हैं तो 40 प्रतिशत आरक्षण होता है और यदि किसी और गांव में 10 प्रतिशत ही एससी हैं तो 10 प्रतिशत ही आरक्षण होता है नतीजा ये कि जबकि आप राज्य जबकि आप गांव के स्तर पर तालुका के स्तर पर या ब्लॉक के स्तर पर और फिर जिला के स्तर पर आरक्षण को कुल मिलाकर देखोगे तो 22 प्रतिशत ही आएगा लेकिन हर एक गांव में जहां की ज्यादा एससी लोग रहते हैं वहां उन्हीं का राज होगा और जहां की कई दूसरे लोगों का होता है ठीक है वहां दूसरों का होगा लेकिन इससे भी आगे उन्होंने महिला आरक्षण के लिए इंतजाम किया आज के दिन जब आप लोकसभा को देखें तो हालांकि हमारे देश की आबादी में 50 प्रतिशत या आधा आधी आबादी महिलाओं की है कितने महिलाएं हैं लोकसभा में शायद 8 8 प्रतिशत आठ प्रतिशत महिलाएं और देश में 50 प्रतिशत महिलाएं हैं और उन्होंने कहा कि नहीं हमें उन्होंने शुरू किया एक तिहाई से फिर आगे बढ़ते बढ़ते अब पंद्रह राज्यों में पचास प्रतिशत हो चुका है आरक्षण सो महिलाएं जो निचले स्तर के हैं वो सब इन इकाइयों में आ चुके हैं और आप पूछेंगे कि कितने तो मैं कुछ आंकड़े आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूं There are altogether about two hundred and fifty thousand, two lakh fifty thousand village panchayats in India. Now, to these two lakh fifty thousand panchayats, we have elect and and then the urban local bodies. We have elected a total of some three point four million, yeah, thirty four lakh. Representatives. Let me translate that into Hindi. हमारे देश में तकरीबन दो हजार नो ढाई लाख दो सौ पचास हजार ढाई लाख गांव हैं और हमने चुनकर निकाला है कोई चौंतीस लाख प्रतिनिधिगण जो कि हमारे स्थायी इकाइयों में ग्रामीण स्तर पर और फिर ऊंचे के स्तर पर चुन कर निकाला है अब पहले क्या था इस परिस्थिति कि कोई 500 लोग थे जो कि चुन कर जाते थे दिल्ली और कोई 4,500 थे जो कि चुन कर जाते थे हैदराबाद और अन्य जो राज्य के राजधानियां हैं 
बाकी बैठे रहो राजीव की क्रांति इतनी थी कि जहां की पांच हजार लोगों का शासन चलता था देश भर में कश्मीर से कन्याकुमारी तक आज के दिन गांव में चौतीस लाख प्रतिनिधिगण है चौतीस लाख और इनमें से चौदह लाख महिलाएं हैं चौदह लाख महिलाएं फोर्टीन लाख इलेक्टेड वुमेन इंडिया हैज मोर इलेक्टेड वुमेन देन इन द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पुट टूगेदर गजब की बात है कि भारत में चुने हुए महिलाओं की संख्या दुनिया भर के चुने हुए महिलाओं से ज्यादा है अब तालियां तो बज नहीं रही हैं लेकिन मेरा यह कहना है कि मुझको यहां आने की क्या जरूरत थी आपको बताने के लिए आप खुद क्यों नहीं इसको जानते थे एक ही कारण कि ये जो चौदह लाख महिलाओं का मैं जिक्र कर रहा हूं वो सब गरीब हैं वो सब बिछड़े जात के हैं वो सब एस सी एस टी है तो हमारे ठेठ मैडम जो कि कांजीवरम साड़ियां पहनती हैं वो कहते हैं कि हमारे लिए क्या जगह है कुछ नहीं है तो इनको जो हमारी नौकरानियां हैं उनको जगह देकर हमें क्या फायदा इट इज अ ट्रेजिडी दैट दिस ग्रेट अचीवमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ राजीव मूव is so little known only because women of a certain upper class do not get adequate representation in parliament or the assemblies so they dismiss what we have achieved for their servants and their servant sisters and we have a very dirty system going on in haryana and rajasthan to prevent uneducated women from coming to the top which is by laying down restrictions on the number of children they can have if they had two children when they were elected and get a third child while they are in office they immediately dismissed if they haven't paid their electricity bills they can't stand in the elections if they have taken a loan from a bank and have not repaid it they can't stand in the election if they haven't passed such and such a class they can't stand for a panchayat election if they haven't passed such and such a class they can't stand for a taluka election if they haven't passed such and such a class they can't stand for a district election the result is that 85% of the women who were elected in haryana before these rules came in 85% of them did not qualify to stand in the next election aur iska kya natija hai zara sun lijiye aur samajh lijiye aur apne iPhones ko zara chhod dijiyega suno ye ek anokhi mauka hai ye mahilaon ko देखते हुए कि ऐसे उभर कर आ रही हैं कि हमारी नौकरानी बन रही है सरपंच जबकि हम यहां बैठे हैं घर में अपने कांजीवरम साड़ी में तो इसलिए इन दो राज्यों में और शुरू हुआ था राजस्थान में जहां की एक महिला चीफ मिनिस्टर थी वसुंधरा राजे कि ये कहो कि दो बच्चे से कम हो तो आप खड़े हो सकती हो लेकिन जीतने के बाद आपका तीसरा बच्चा हो गया तो तब फौरन आपका डिसमिसल होगा ये कहते थे कि आपकी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल को आपने नहीं काटा तो तब आप खड़े नहीं हो सकते हो कि आपने ऋण लिया हो बैंक से और उसको वापस नहीं दिया हो तो तब आप खड़े नहीं हो सकते हो और जब तक कि आपने फलाने क्लास को नहीं पास किया आप पंचायतों में नहीं खड़े हो सकते हो फलाने क्लास नहीं पास किया 
तो आप तालुका पंचायत में नहीं खड़े हो सकते हो और फलाने क्लास को नहीं पास किया तो आप डिस्ट्रिक्ट पंचायत में नहीं आ सकते हो और इसका नतीजा ये था कि हरियाणा में पचासी प्रतिशत महिलाएं जो चुनकर आई थी इन नए नियमों के पहले वो खड़ी भी नहीं हो सकी दूसरे इलेक्शन में और ये सवाल नहीं पूछा गया कि क्यों आम जनता अनपढ़ गरीब औरत के लिए वोट डाल रही है जबकि इतने शानदार और बिल्कुल टॉप महिलाएं हैं गांव में जो कि चौधरी की बीवी हों या किसी रेड्डी की बीवी हों कारण बहुत सिंपल था वो देखते थे कि जो ऊंचे वर्ग की महिलाएं हैं वो चली जाती थीं चंडीगढ़ या हैदराबाद या मद्रास और कभी कभी गांव में आती थी जहाँ की गरीब औरत वहीं के वहीं रहती थी क्योंकि उसके उसका तो उसके पास साधन नहीं थे कहीं और जाने के लिए तो आप सीधा उनके घर जा सकते थे कोई कुत्ता नहीं था बाहर भोंकने के लिए आप जाओ खटखट आओ और कहो महिला से कि मेरे घर में मेरे नलके में पानी नहीं आ रहा है और कल सुबह तक नहीं आया तो तुम्हें वोट नहीं मिलेगा कल अब किसकी हिम्मत होगी कि जो बहुत बड़ा लैंडलॉर्ड है उसके घर में जाए खटखटाए और महिला से कहे कि कल शाम तक मेरी नाली से सारा जो गंध है वो निकले नहीं तो तुम्हें वोट नहीं दूंगा तो यही कारण है कि गरीब गरीब के लिए वोट डाल रहा था और उनको कोई इतराज नहीं था कि वो गरीब महिला के लिए वोट डाले क्योंकि आखिर गरीब महिला को अपने जीवन कमाने के लिए उनको बाहर जाकर काम करना पड़ता है जहां की हमारे ऊंचे वर्ग के जो महिलाएं हैं वो घर बैठी रहती हैं या दुपट्टा को ऐसे करके निकलती हैं तो इसलिए वो, वो खड़ी नहीं होती थी और खड़ी हो गई तो कैसा चुनाव लड़े क्योंकि चुनाव लड़ना हो तो आपको जाना पड़ेगा किसी अनजान के दरवाजे पर खटखटाना होगा और वो आदमी आएगा अपने तहमत पहनते हुए कि हाँ तुम कौन हो और तुम कहो कि मेरा नाम रीटा है और मैं खड़ी हो रही हूँ और आप उषा को वोट मत दीजिए मुझे दीजिए ये तो गरीब औरत कर सकती है अमीर औरत कर सकती है क्या तो एक क्रांति चल रही है हमारे ग्रामीण इलाकों में कि जो दबे हुए महिलाएं थे दबे हुए वर्गों को छोड़िए जो दबे हुए महिलाएं थे और वो भी सबसे दबे हुए थे दबे हुए वर्गों के वो आज उभर कर आ गई हैं और ये पदों को वो संभाल रही हैं और ये लोग क्या कहते हैं जो शहर में रहते हैं कि नहीं ये तो सरपंच राज चल रहा है कि पंचपति काम करता है तो मैं भी गया इसी के साथ जबकि मैं पंचायत मंत्री था दौरे करता था तो राजस्थान के एक गाँव में एक महिला बहुत ही शानदार तरीके से जो भी सवाल मैं कर रहा था पंचायती राज के बारे में उनके गांव के हालत के बारे में बहुत ही सुंदर जवाब दे रही थी और अचानक एक सवाल के जवाब में एक आदमी उठा और उन्होंने इसके जानब से जवाब दिया तो मैं उसके तरफ देखा और मैंने कहा कि मैंने सवाल तो मैडम से किया है और तुम कौन हो जवाब देने का उनका शानदार जवाब आ रहा है तो मैं उन्हीं के बात सुनना चाहता हूँ तो फिर मैं आगे बढ़ा और जबकि एक और सवाल किया दोबारा ही आदमी खड़ा हुआ तो मैंने कहा कि आखिर तुम हो कौन और सब लोग हंसने लगे कहा कि ये तो सरपंच के शौर हैं और इसलिए वो जवाब दे रहे हैं और फिर उस महिला ने मेरे तरफ घूम कर कहा और ये गांव की सरपंच है और मैं हूँ केंद्रीय मंत्री उस जमाने में बहुत बहुत बड़ा आदमी हुआ करता था 
अब तो वो सब खत्म हो गया लेकिन उस जमाने में मैं केंद्रीय मंत्री था और ये लड़की एक गांव के सरपंच तो उन्होंने मुझसे कहा कि साहब मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि आपका क्या इतराज है हम दोनों की शादी 50 साल से हो चुकी है हमारे चार पांच बच्चे हैं उनका पालना उनका देखभाल करना हम दोनों ने एक साथ दिया और जो भी मुझको दिक्कत होती है जिंदगी में उसमें वो मेरे सहारे के लिए आते हैं और जो भी संकट में वो पड़ जाते हैं तो मैं अपने तरफ से उनकी उनको जरा उनकी हालत जरा सुधारने की कोशिश करते हूं तो अब ये एक नया काम मुझको दिया गया है मैं तो पहले कभी सरपंच नहीं रही हूं और मैंने अपने शौर से पूछा कुछ मदद के लिए तो आपको क्या इतराज है कि वो मुझे मदद करते हैं एंड आई वाज अनएबल टू आंसर आई नो दैट इन माय लाइफ I whenever I am down it's my wife who pulls me up and whenever I am floating too much in the air it's my wife who pulls me down brings me to reality so if I need my wife well why shouldn't she need her husband and why all this talk of sarpanch pati it's all a way of denigrating women so if you want gender equality the only way of doing it is this i know a scheduled caste woman in himachal pradesh in the district of uh, i forgot its name solan she has been continuously the village president for the last 25 years she was first elected when the post was reserved for women then she was elected when the post was reserved for dalits then she was elected when it was a general post and now she continues to be elected whatever is happening because she does a good job and it's not isolated i have met them all over the place in karnataka your neighboring state when in when i was minister that's why i got the details the scheduled caste women are entitled to 33% of the reserved seats but the actual result showed that 54% of the elected scheduled caste candidates were scheduled caste women and that the number of the percentage of scheduled tribe women who were elected was 63% why because these women work they are co earners with their husbands they know how to go into the market they are they are the ones who have to demand ki nahi mujhko 100 rupaye milna chahiye aapne mujhe 90 rupaye diye they are the ones who sauda karte hain they are the ones who are not sitting at home they are out in the public space aur isliye वो उभर कर आई हैं आगे बढ़ गई हैं और इतना आगे बढ़ गई हैं कि हमारे देश के पंद्रह राज्यों में महिलाओं का आरक्षण पचास प्रतिशत बढ़ा गया है और मैं उस दिन का इंतजार में हूं जबकि पार्लियामेंट इसको पचास परसेंट करे हर राज्य में क्यों नहीं आखिर आधा मानव जाति तो महिलाओं का है और उनको अपना सही स्थान देना यही तो न्याय बनता है और इनमें से ज्यादातर गरीब हों और निचले वर्गों के तो तब खुशी ही खुशी इसमें क्या शिकायत करने की जरूरत हमारा सबसे बड़ी उपलब्धि ये है कि हमारे देश में जो चुनकर हमने महिलाओं को निकाला है उनकी समस्त उनकी संख्या समस्त विश्व में जो चुने हुए लड़कियां हैं महिलाएं हैं उनसे ज्यादा भारतवर्ष में अकेला है और इस तत्व को कोई नहीं जानता कोई नहीं मन की बात में बताता क्योंकि उनके मन में इस बात है या नहीं मैं नहीं जानता यही है दिक्कत कि जो हमारी उपलब्धियां हैं हम उनको नहीं बताते हम बस शिकायतों को बताते हैं 
और शिकायतों को बताना बहुत जरूरी है आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू से दैट वी मस्ट हाइड द डिफेक्ट्स पंचायती राज हैज अ लॉट ऑफ डिफेक्ट्स इट्स मेन डिफेक्ट इज दैट द मैन द वाइल द मैंडेटरी प्रोविजंस दैट इज व्हाट यू हैव टू डू जो मजबूरियां हैं हमारे संविधान में कि आपको पंचायतों को गठित करना ही चाहिए कि चुनाव करवाने ही चाहिए कि स्टेट फाइनेंस कमेटी होना ही चाहिए कि स्टेट इलेक्शन कमेटी होना ही चाहिए ये सब जो मजबूरियां हैं वो तो हमारे राज्यों ने पूरा स्वीकार कर लिया लेकिन बहुत से प्रावधान हैं जो कि सशक्तिकरण से जुड़े हुए हैं और वो मजबूर नहीं करता है वो सिफारिश देता है राज्यों को कि आप ये कीजिए वो कीजिए so the constitutional provisions are recommendatory whatever is mandatory is happening all over the country whatever is recommendatory is not happening jo bhi majburiyan hain usko to raj sarkaron ne chun liya hai apna liya hai lekin jo sifarishein hain unko wahi ke wahi chhod diya hai to is paristhiti mein आप क्या कर सकते हैं वॉट आर द स्टेप्स दैट यू कैन टेक टू एंश्योर दैट द मैंडेटरी प्रोविजन दैट द रिकमेंडेटरी प्रोविजन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आर गिवन द सेम स्टेटस एज द मैंडेटरी पावर्स विल द आंसर इज वेरी सिंपल इट इज दैट ऑल स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स हैव इनएक्टेड कन्फॉर्मिटी लेजिस्लेशन to the constitutional provisions and those are justiciable after all the state act on panchayati raj is common law you can challenge it a constitutional provision you have to show that there's a constitutional infirmity otherwise the supreme court won't take note of it but your high courts are there for you to say that the state government the state legislature has accepted all the 29 subjects that are illustratively mentioned in the uh, constitution but made them a state obligation in the state legislation that there is a model for devolution that first you decide what are your panchayats going to do you don't have to start with 29 what are the six or seven functions that are going to be performed by the states by the panchayats that is the first f the functions the next f is the finances kaam karna ho to साधन की जरूरत है आप ये कह दें कि हाँ आप शिक्षा चलाइए गांव का शिक्षा लेकिन गांव के शिक्षे के लिए आपने पैसा नहीं दिया तो कैसे चलाएगा तो जो होता है जो फंक्शंस हैं उसके साथ फाइनेंस भी भेजने हैं और अधिकारी गण को भी भेजना है तीसरा एफ बनता है फंक्शनरीज जिसका मतलब है अधिकारी गण तो सबसे पहले you have the fa- functions the finances and the functionaries tino ikatthe aa gaye to tabhi ja kar sarpanch kaam kar sakta hai aapne atak kar di usko diya ki ha ye aapka kaam hai karo lekin paise sab sarkari naukar ke sath rehte hain ki jo sarkari naukar hai wo aapki baat nahi sunta wo kehta hai ki mantri ko bataye It's dysfunctional so panchayati raj has been made dysfunctional by the non observance of the provisions of the state law so don't change the position of the panchayats from the state list to the central list or the constituent list if you try to do that you are centralizing in the name of decentralization but if you if people like professor purushottam reddy and ngos are able to go to the hyderabad high court 
and say that this is what is written in the Andhra Pradesh law. And the reality is that it is not happening. And produce all these punches, these sarpanches, as your witnesses. How can a high court deny you? Likha hua hai kanun mein. Kanun ko banane wali hai Telangana ki sarkar. Aur unho ne usko lagu nahi kiya. To un pa shikayat lag sakta hai. Aur dand lagega court ke taraf se. और उसके बाद भी उन्होंने नहीं किया तो तब आप कोर्ट में जा सकते हो कह सकते हो कि ये कंटेंप्ट ऑफ कोर्ट है अब मैंने सोचा था कि शायद केंद्र कर सकता है लेकिन केंद्र को किसी राज्य को हाई कोर्ट में ले जाना या सुप्रीम कोर्ट में ले जाना हमारे संविधान के अनुसार ये असंभव है तो आप ही जो सिविल सोसाइटी के लोग हैं या पंचायतों के लोग हैं सरपंचों का कोई संगठन हो तो उसके तरफ से आप कोर्ट में जा सकते हो और कह सकते हो कि कानून में ये लिखा है लेकिन हकीकत जमीन के स्तर पर ये है तो इसलिए आप कृपया सरकार को बताइए उनको मजबूर कीजिए कि जो कानून उन्होंने खुद बनाया है उसको अमल में लाना उन्हीं का काम है और जब तक कि वो नहीं लाते हैं तब तक कोर्ट के कंटेंप्ट में है तब काम बन सकता है तो इस क्रांतिकारी काम मैं आप पर छोड़ रहा हूं आप चाहते हो तो मैं भी आपके साथ आ सकता हूं लेकिन कदम तो आपको उठाना होगा हम दिल्ली में बैठे तेलुगु ने जाने क्या कह सकते हैं कि गांव में क्या हो रहा है आप ही जानते हो आपको हमें बताने की जरूरत नहीं है आप ही अपना दस्तावेज दरख्वास्त तैयार कीजिए वकीलों की कोई कमी नहीं है वकीलों का जो राय मशवरा है वो ले लीजिए और उसके साथ पिटिशन तैयार करवाइए और सरकार जो भी रंग का हो टीआरएस का हो या कांग्रेस का हो या कम्युनिस्ट का हो उनको सीधा अदालत के सामने पेश कीजिए और कहिए कि ये उन्होंने खुद अपने कानून में अपना लिखा हुआ कानून में ये बताया है और ये नहीं कर रहे हैं तो इसको सही करने के लिए क्या किया जाए यहां आप इंकलाब जिंदाबाद कह सकते हो लेकिन किसी और पर छोड़ना कि और कोई आएगा कोई पुरुषोत्तम रेड्डी आएगा या कोई मोहन गुरुस्वामी आएगा चलता नहीं है आप ही लोगों को खुद कर इसलिए मैं आपके तरफ देखकर बोल रहा हूं यह आपके लिए संदेश है आप अपना संगठन बनाइए और आपको पता ना हो कि कैसे बनाएं तो बगल में जो कर्नाटक राज्य है वहां बहुत अच्छे संगठन बनाए गए हैं पंचायतों का केरल में भी बनाए गए हैं मेरे ख्याल में एक हद तक तमिलनाडु में भी है मैं नहीं जानता कि यहां है या नहीं और मैं नहीं जानता कि बंटवारा के बाद जबकि आंध्र प्रदेश को अलग किया गया तेलंगाना से कि कोई संस्थान तब हुआ होगा जो कि और उसकी क्या हालत है आज लेकिन क्योंकि ये आपके स्वार्थ से जुड़ा हुआ है क्योंकि आपको अपना काम करने के लिए छूट मिलना चाहिए तो ये कदम आप ही उठाइए और आपके साथ जुड़ने के लिए बहुत से एनजीओस होंगे बहुत से वकील होंगे जो मुफ्त में भी ये काम करने को तैयार होंगे और फिर हम देखें कि कौन इस क्रांति को रोक सकता है बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद नमस्कार जय हिंद सर विद ऑल दोस नंबर्स एंड डिटेल्स यू हैव पुट गूगल टू शेम इट्स योर वेल्थ ऑफ नॉलेज एंड इमेंस एक्सपीरियंस एज अ पॉलिटिकल लीडर दैट वाज स्पीकिंग हियर एंड यू हैव कम कंक्लूडेड विद अ वेरी इंस्पायरिंग नोट एंड आई एम श्योर आवर uh sarpanches here will take necessary action as i was saying that no conversation about democracy will be conducted without mention of the ideological seeds of sown by the father of the nation and the constitutional provisions drafted by baba saheb ambedkar and the democratic institutions set up by pandit jawahar lal nehru thank you very much sir for all the information you have given especially 
your experiences with the, the late Prime Minister Sri Rajiv Gandhi and the noble works he has done towards empowering the Panchayat Raj is really commendable. And uh, it, it's, it, it is really a quite a bit of information that we all need to know. Thank you. The respect to the Jaipal Reddy sir who has a great personality because he fought yeah. those days with Mukesh Sambani. Mukesh Sambani sir. And uh, I will speak a little bit Telugu though my mother tongue Bengali, Desa Bhasa Londu Telugu Lessa. Panchayat, there are a lot of development in Telangana. So, uh, few statistics I will hand over if possible to give. Because the Panchayat Raj developed the Mai Mahatma Gandhi NREGS, 100 days work. And Telangana, a lot of persons have been benefited because last 30 years, Nenu Telangana, Pura district law visited the IPND. And uh, so lastly, today is a very auspicious day, though 9th May, 7th May, there is a great personality, Telugu person born in uh, India. Sar was telling many do not know, we do not highlight. Uh, Sita Rama Raju, Aluru Sita Rama Raju, 26 years age, he fought for the democracy and he was killed by the British, correct? We should highlight this type of names because Iroju, we are enjoying democracy because of like Sitarama Raju, Alaru Raju. And lastly, sir, I visited 50 countries and Chinese people told Indian democracy is very good. I have written an article, Chinese people told because China you cannot highlight. If you asked what is the Tibetan policy, they can I mean, in Telugu, Odu Odu, Matladu Ledu, like that. So scared of the Chinese rule. Till now, a few years back, digital. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for giving the opportunity. This is uh, Professor Shankar Chatterjee, one of the leading professors on the subject of Panchayat Raj in India. Thank you, sir. And one, one more person, that is my friend uh, B.B. Subarao, who is an international consultant when it comes to environmental issues. And he has been working on the, uh, along with me, sir. He is a co-founder co of Hyderabad Democracy Forum. And I request, uh, Subarauji to please come. Thank you so much, Professor Purushottam Reddy Garu, Manishankar Ayer Garu and Mohan Gurswami Garu. From my young days, I started my career at the age of 23 in Basta as a central government employee. And I was hearing only three things. We praise small farmer. Oh, and we promote corporate farming. I do not understand the logic and the Indian mindset. And small industry, self-employed industry. Today we are inviting with a red carpet the MNCs from anywhere in the world. We are repeating what has happened before the colonial period. And today we are talking on democracy, the two on Panchayat Raj system, where we have 250,000 Panchayats, not Raj. We have created Panchayat and Havoc in 250,000. And we are unable to sustain. At the same time, when we refer to Mahatma Gandhiji, the villagers are the backbone. We are removing one bone after the other from the back. So where is the country left? Today we are passing through an utter chaos, the country. Today we need to discuss on these issues. And uh, really I am thankful for participating in this uh, your talk. One thing I could not understand, you said that state law, you have a state law where I can question the state. When the state itself amends the panchayats and the local government acts in the assembly, because it has the complete majority, where do we go? I think it is time to go for a wider debate on panchayat raj system. And thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank okay, I think, uh, thank you very much. This has become a fantastic interactive session. So it concludes with the message that the vote is uh, the most powerful weapon. So I thank you one and all and stay safe. Jai Hind.